All right, welcome back to Visual Studio Code with Node.js. I'm Rami, and with me is Stacy, and this is our second module, and we'll be talking about Express. Yay! <laughs> I'm super excited. It means yeah. we're going to be building stuff. Yeah, yeah. so uh, for those of you who didn't catch it at the last module, Express is a web framework yep. that we could use uh, to build web applications. Yep. And uh, in this module, we're going to cover what is Express. What like, is Express? Why would you use Express? Yeah. Yeah. How do you actually install it? How do you get started? Uh, we're going to have a couple of demos. Uh, yeah. One of them is uh, how to build a simple REST API. Sure. Then we're going to show you how to build uh, an Express app that has multiple pages. Yep. Then we're going to show you how to build an even more RESTful API right. uh, as well. And yeah. we're going to cover, in the meantime, templating and a bunch of other concepts that are very important to Express. Right. Uh, so let's get started. What is Express? What is Express? Well, Express is a very uh, minimal open source and very flexible Node.js web app framework. And it's really designed to make developing websites, web apps, um, specifically single page applications, yeah. uh, and APIs very easy. Right. So quick, 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 quick. Right? right? Just up and running. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's very simple. It's If you've ever used uh, Sinatra in the Ruby world or perhaps Flask uh, in the Python world, yeah. you might feel that Express is very, very similar. And in fact, it was inspired by those frameworks. Yeah. So it is uh, a very straightforward, simple ex uh, framework, and it is the most popular one by far yeah. in the Node community. So and, and you'll see why. You'll see yeah. why, yeah. Um, so if you're wondering, well, why should I use Express? Why can't I just make a simple uh, HTTP server that does everything? Uh, well, quite simply, Express um, makes a lot of different things easier. And one of those things is responding to different uh, URLs, so different routes. Right. Uh, so with Express, uh, you can respond to requests uh, and uh, write specific responses to specific URLs. So let's say you're building a blog, or maybe you're building a uh, web application. Every time that you hit a specific uh, URL, you want to write a specific response. Express makes that very easy to do. Right. Uh, and of course, the other thing that it does is templating. Templating, you know, and and once you, <laughs> I'm going to sing everything from now on. Templating. <laughs> once you, uh, I enjoy it. Sorry, but <laughs> templating is one of those things that once you get into a little bit, especially uh, building web apps, uh, you start to realize, okay, I can, you know, if I'm going to reuse this little bit of uh, HTML or or whatnot, I can uh, create a template and reuse it again and again. So think of a product page where maybe the product has a picture and a title and a link and, and you know a call to action or whatever, all that stuff, and it just repeats itself down the page. Why would you write out all that HTML? You can just use a snippet or a template, for example, uh, along those lines. And you'll see that working with Express, um, there are a lot of different templating engines, and they all kind of work in their own little way. They're similar uh, in a lot of regards in terms of what you can do and how they work. But you know, everyone has their own thing that they like. Some people, you know, we're going to be showing you Jade, for example, which is pretty standard out of the box with Express. But you know, some people like handlebars or you know, mustache. Or yeah, I forgot. Yeah, all the beard-oriented facial I'm hair. I'm waiting. Ones. I'm waiting for the beard templating language. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yes. You know, but I don't know where they name these things sometimes. But you know, you'll you'll start to see that it, you know that's another reason why you're going to start to work with something like Express because it starts to simplify these things and make it much easier for you to get up and running and you just become more efficient. And who doesn't love efficiency? I yeah. mean and if you're a web designer that perhaps you've used already mustache and handlebars, you yeah. can actually um, replace Jade with those templating languages as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so if it's, you're comfortable with other all those other ones you might plug and play. Plug, plug and, and play. play. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna talk a little bit about installing and using Express. Very simple. Very We've seen NPM. Yeah, We've I'm seen like NPM in the last module. Yep. Well, here it is. It's back. <laughs> it's back. Uh, very easy to install Express. All you gotta do is npm install Express. Yep. That is it. Yeah, and if you want to install Jade alongside of that, it's just npm install Jade. And again, very simple. Just installs it for you, and you're good to go. Yeah. So why don't we start with a simple uh, demo? Um, we're going to create a REST API. So if you've ever built a complex web app or a single page application, you typically want to have some way to interact with the database that's sitting on the server. And uh, the most standard way to do that, I guess, is using an API. Yeah. Right? So you can do uh, HTML requests, uh, AJAX requests to that API, get some data back in JSON format, do something with it, put it on the screen, uh, and whatnot. So uh, why don't we show you how to create a simple REST API with Node.js? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my code editor. And we're going to go to uh, the folder 08 express rest. That's, what's gonna, that's where it's going to contain all the code that I'm going to show you right now. But I just wanted to show you again how to actually install 
um, express. So why don't I go in to my 08 folder, and of course, I didn't do that. Now I did. <laughs> Take a look inside it. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that you can see it. Uh, we've got our app.js file, but here is the package.json. So if you remember, we said that anytime a package requires or depends on a module, yeah. uh, you want to put it in package.json. There's a quite simple way to do that. Um, you can go into your package.json and type it in right there, express3. For this sample, we're using express3, but in the other samples, we're going to be using express4. Uh, you can see that, hey, uh, I've got this uh, basic part at the top that explains what this module does and, and whatnot, and then the dependencies right there. Um, if you put a star, it's going to install the latest version. If you specify the version, it's going to install that one. Uh, so now if I go back and I just go into my folder, I can actually just type in npm install, and it will read the package.json and install everything that's there. So if I do that, it'll do some magic. <laughs> Boom. Everything's already installed, so it didn't do much. Is that your sign for magic, by the way? It is. I just love like that. Just like text on screen, <laughs> magic. <laughs> For, so if you can't if you can't see me while I actually do that because we're focused on the same, this is what I actually did. This is what Stacy is referring to. I said magic, <laughs> uh, and I bet that's going to be a gif at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Please make it. Please make it happen. Please. So uh, yeah, so I, I keep switching my my my, my screens around. Um, so once we've got the npm install. Uh, you can do that on your on your own machine as well to be able to actually execute this uh, this file app.js. Uh, if I go into it, you'll notice it's got the very similar uh, require at the top, and in this case, we're requiring the express module. Uh, what that's going to do is actually going to go into the node modules folder right here and find it uh, in your local node underscore modules. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to actually call um, the express function. Now, you'll notice this is a little funky because previously, whenever we have to do something uh, from a module, we used to do express dot uh, something. Well, you can actually not just export a bunch of functions, you can export just one if you wanted to uh, and set the exports uh, for that module as that function. And in this case, that's what we did. So we can actually call express right here. And what that's going to do is going to return an app. Okay, And this app is going to contain a bunch of functions. Uh, one of them is get. Okay, and uh, what get does is it basically says, hey, whenever there's a get request, a get HTTP request, so if you know your HTTP methods, there's get, there's put, there's patch, there's delete, there's post, uh, get is one of them. <laughs> and uh, it's, we're going to pass in a URL for when it should execute this function, right. and a callback that gets a request and a response. Right. So here we are. Uh, we're going to say, hey, this app has one URL, just the home URL, and uh, execute this function when it's a get on that URL. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do with that response is we're going to write uh, to, the, uh, to the response in the JSON format this object that says message, hooray, welcome to our API. Now, once we've got all of these URLs set, uh, all of these routes, uh, we're going to actually start the app by saying app.listen, and we're going to take the environment, uh, the port variable that was passed in the environment, or 8080, and seeing as I will not be passing a port, when I go ahead and execute that file, it will be available on the port 8080. So now if I go to a browser, which I have right here, <laughs> and then I write in localhost 8080. Yay. There it is, application.json. Now, uh, Internet Explorer also Yay. tried to get the favicon icon. That's what you can see right there. Um, exactly. Yes, yes, yeah, 200. OK, awesome. <laughs> um, so here we are. It yes. actually returned uh, application.json because that is the type that we wanted to send. And if you take a look at the result, hooray, welcome to our API. Everything works. Everything is glorious. Everything is awesome. And I am very happy. <laughs> Great. So, I mean, in that example, we talked a little bit about routes, right? And you're going like an app, get, and if someone basically is getting this route, which, you know, the slash just means the index page, right? Your kind of yep. home page. Um, and then you're, you know, doing all, all these kind of things. Um, you know, routes in that way, you know, uh, Express kind of helps you do the, the get and they do the put and all that kind of stuff. And you can start to see that um, whether we just use get, we'll use post or something maybe in the future. Um, 
But you can start to see that that get request was kind of like, you know, halfway down the screen, you'll see the local host, it's 8888, well, you did 8080, and it's like the index page. And so that's what that initial kind of slash, um, we have the index listed here, and you'd have the index at the top. But that's one of the beauties of routes is that you can easily in Express, uh, we just went to the home page, the traditional kind of index, uh, you know, root of the application. But, you know, Express allows you to easily add these routes. So if you need to have a route um, for your API that is going to be, you know, slash schools, uh, slash students, slash, you know, schools, slash students, for example, like, you know, the way that you kind of construct an API in that way, um, Express is very easy to do that. And again, it's exactly kind of how you saw. You just need to figure out what the route is, how you're going to handle it, and what you're going to do there. And so we saw the very basics of that yeah. there. And let's say that we were trying to build a blog, right? We want to have different URLs for different pages, different yeah. blog articles, right? Yeah. So we can actually also do that. And uh, I guess uh, let's say that we have all these different pages, but they're all roughly the same, right? Like, the, how do we actually write the same function callback? for uh, all the different pages that we have in our blog. Right. And I think that's what you're going to show us next. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to go through um, showing you the idea of like adding those multiple routes and just uh, very simply express for multiple pages. And um, this is very quickly, you know, can get you up and running. And so I'm going to open up code. And I'm going to show you uh, one little thing I kind of like about code in here. So I'm going to. Uh, make sure that I'm in the right one. So I'm going to open up that 11 express multiple. And one thing that you can do is you can go code, for, or I can go CD um, express, uh, tab that out. Okay, I'm in that directory. I can go code dot. And once you install code, it's on the command line. So what it's going to do is it should, you'll see it's flashing at me, giving me a little heads up that it's ready and that it's open. And you'll see that it's opened up just that folder. So, you know, again, you can use it off the command line. You can go into any directory and just open it. One of the nice uh, things about code. One of the things that we showed earlier, we had to fix earlier actually, was our font sizes. And I just wanted to show this very quickly, was that, you know, all of your preferences are in here. So, for example, preferences, I'm going to have to do, uh, you know, user settings here. I'm going to have to uh, change my font size. Um, and I can do that right here. And I don't know, what should I make it 18? Right, and it automatically just updates it. And you can start to set all your preferences there in code. Um, so you know, if you're kind of uh, used to doing that, you'll see that that's pretty basic. Now, what I've done in this Express Multiple is I actually use something that uh, we're going to show um, called the Express Generator. And the Express Generator really just goes through and it like lays out a complete template. If you're like me, you know, a little lazy, maybe, I don't know, lazy, smart, fine line there. <laughs> but if you want to just, you know, get everything set up, you can use this uh, Express Generator. And what it will do is it'll just lay out all these basic things for you, a templated application, right? And so in doing that, uh, what I've done is I've gone through and we've seen some routes in an Express app. And so, you know, as we just saw before, it was very simple. We kind of didn't use any of this infrastructure here, but now I'm kind of showing you the whole entire infrastructure behind it. You'll see that there's all these things being included across the board. And we have, you know, all these includes at the top from um, loggers, cookie parsers, body parsers, these things that you might want to use in your application. And by default, it gives you these routes. And so to explain kind of how a route or a structure goes in Express is that if we look on the left, when you create an Express uh, generated project here, you have uh, your app.js, that's your starting point, right? That's your main point. App.js is your, you know, your go-to. And you have views and routes and in public. Now to explain this to you just a little bit, public is always going to be things that are going to be, you know, um, JavaScript, style sheets, that kind of thing. Um, anything that's, uh, you know, more on the uh, client side, really. Images also? Uh, that's where I would put them, yeah, in public, right? Because it's going to map everything to that kind of public folder. And I feel like you're going to be like testing me on this and I'm going to be <laughs> failing miserably. I'm going to be like, yes, no, maybe so. Um, and then you're going to have views. And views are basically, as we mentioned, we're using a templated engine. It's Jade. 
And so views are held in views, and these are the items or the snippets of HTML or the HTML pages um, that you want to use. And anything that you want to pull out of there will be contained in views. Now, the next one I want to show you is routes. And routes is going to be all of these uh, individual JavaScript files that handle the routes. And so what you do is you basically say to Express, Express, I want you to include this file that I want to use, for example. Right, And what I want you to do is I want you to, when someone calls this route, so app use, for example, an app is going to be that variable that Rami did before. He created you know, a variable called app and had it equivalent to express. And again, we're using all the functions available in express. Um, and you start to see, you know, set the views. Here's where I'm going to get the views from. So that's a folder right there. This right here, Express. Uh, the, the views, uh, line 15. Where are we looking at? Views. That Yes, this is going to give you the path. It's basically creating that directory name to that views right there so that you okay. know exactly where to get it from. And so you got the next one, the view engine, and you go down and you have, you know, some what we would typically have called maybe middleware, things that are going to do things for you, uh, body parser for JSON, things like that. Not going to get too much into that. But you'll see the app use. So I'm going to use... When someone hits this route, so just straight up right at the, the root of it, it's going to use this variable that we created up before, which is pointing to this JavaScript, right? And or this JavaScript function rather. And so again, we have users. So by default, when you do this, you'll get this. I added in this places one. And so what that means is someone goes and hits the slash places, they're going to get this route or this variable right here slash routes, slash places, and that's going to handle that. That's the item that's looking forward to that. So let's look at this places. If we look at this places, you'll see that, again, very, very simple. Um, we've got, uh, we're using the express router here. We're including express. And the router is basically saying, OK, this is when I get that, um, that basic slash, which is just on places. So this is where you might say, if you want to go places slash um, schools, you might do that, for example, right? Didn't even spell that right. But, and here's a callback, or here's what you should do here. So at this point, this callback is, am I going to render some HTML? Am I going to go out to an API and, and get some data back and, and write some JSON back like you did, right? Maybe go get some data from a database. Or go, go get data from a database, or write back a basic text string, or... Do Come some on. JSON work. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get busy and you just send it back, right? And so what we're doing here is we're saying before you saw that uh, we had said, you know, basically to the response dot JSON. So we were telling it, okay, we want you to throw JSON back to the page. But what we're doing here is we're saying render. And what we're doing is we're rendering what template we want to use and we're passing it some data. So let's kind of see this in action or at least see this item um, being... Uh, started. So if I'm in here, I should be able to, and I'm going to go npm start, for example, because once you've installed uh, Express with the generator, and I should probably go through the Express generator and how you install it, but once you go, you can start to use npm to actually start it, and it'll figure out what port do I start it on, what are your configurations that you set, um, all that, oh, that's not good, all that good kind of stuff. You, you probably want to do an npm install. Oh, yeah. Thanks, buddy. I thought I did that already. Oh, there we go. You see that little icon? And you saw stuff kind of uh, moving down. It's a good thing you're here. Right, and then I installed everything. So again, once you get that package and once you start it, nope. You cannot find module. Cannot find module. Hold on. Let me see. What is going on here? Uh, do you see that? I don't see that. One sec. Okay, let's make it bigger. Well, let's do this. Node app.js. Nope, I've got an error in this one. All right. <laughs> Did you modify any of the files, perhaps? No, I didn't touch anything. Should be good. All right, maybe we can move on to the next one, and I can figure this one, and we can come back to it. There we go. First demo. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, 
So. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, I actually know what's going on. Oh, uh, awesome. It's actually missing uh, the bin dash ww file. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so easy way to do that. Why don't we go up one folder and actually use the express generator? Uh, show you how to use the express generator, and from there we'll take the bin ww folder that we forgot to put in the repo. <laughs> right. So if I do the generator, I have it installed, right? But I can go npm install express generator. Do you want to install it globally, perhaps? With the G flag? Yeah, yep. absolutely. That way I can use it on the command line. So if it's installed that way, I have no problem. Awesome. And then what I can do is I can just do express, right? So I'm up a folder. It's looking, and now again, express is looking for a folder here. And so I can easily just do express at the root here, and it's just going to basically kind of go through, and it's going to be like, oh, no, this is not empty, which is fine, right? So now what I need to do is I need to install. And it's created all of these things, so it's going to write all that stuff. It's going to install all these things. Now it's going and it's looking to npm for the registry, and it's getting all the modules. And it's you know you start to see this list of crazy stuff coming down, right? And now I should be able to go npm start. Okay, golden. So we've got it started, and I can bring it up here, and it should be running on. Localhost 3000, that's the default. Okay, and you start to see that it has these items, and I think it was users or user. Okay, respond re with a resource. Now, okay, we're covered. I'm recovered now. Let's add a root. Let's show you how to do that real quick. So, what we want to do is we want to go back into here, and I'm going to close this off. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to close this folder. So if you want to close a folder, you can go close folder. Uh, I'm going to say don't save. I'm going to open the folder. So again, a couple little things showing you along the, uh, along the way. And I can select this folder. Hey, maybe you want to copy the bin www folder that you were missing earlier? Uh, I think I overwrote everything here, did I not? No, you overwrote the node MVA folder. Hold on. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay. You are ahead of me, my friend. Paste. There we go. Okay. So now, mm -mm 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 -mm. let's do this. Let's kill this process. Okay. CD 11. NPM uh, start. There we go. So now we're set up. Thanks, buddy. And we can start to look at 3000. And I had places. And you can see just that route right there. Thanks for getting me set up. You can see that just by changing that route, I changed the title of it. And you can start to add routes. So to add a route, is very, very simple. And to do so, if we bring up code uh, again and we go to the apps, you'll see that what you need to do is you need to create a file and you put it into roots here. And you use that root when they are calling that. And in this file here, you'll see that you can put anything that you want. So I have places, I could change this to be more data, I could use a different template, I could do all sorts of things. So to create a new route, it's just that, that kind of process. So can you walk me through this again? Uh, so this is the places.js file in the routes folder. Right. Right. And inside this file, we have the router that we've created right. Right, from Express. Yep. And then we add the get uh, request for that URL to the router. Right. And then we export the router. Right. Using module.exports. Right. So that when we go back in app.js. Yeah. And we go right to the top, we are requiring that places, right? Right, right here. Exactly. So that so in that places, there's the router that we just set. Yeah, we're actually requiring the router. The router. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. And then when we go use, here is where we're specifying sort of that root URL slash places. Right. So that in our Places.js, yeah. where we don't have to say slash places, right? Yeah, we don't we have to worry about any slash. of it. Yep. Awesome. 
So, and again, you know, if you wanted to use a different route or add multiple routes to places, for example, places you're going to have a get or a put or, or you know, again, changing that, the complexity of the route, you can totally do that. Awesome. That's where you're at. Awesome. <laughs> Let's go back to our slides. Oops. One sec. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Okay. So... All right. Uh, slideshow. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about actually, we've shown a little bit of routes. So, like yeah, basic so we, pages. We've shown routing. Yeah. Uh, we've shown how you could uh, render a, a template, right, right uh, with your router. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to actually create what is called a RESTful API. Uh, and I have a I'm a big fan of dogs. I just got a puppy. Her name is Ruby. She's really awesome. So I figured, hey, I'm going to create a uh, RESTful API uh, for dogs. Just for right? dogs. Now, this is going to come in very <laughs> handy. <laughs> yeah, this is going to come in very, very handy when you're building, let's say, a, a single page application and you need an API for the different resources that you have. Right. Um, let's say that we're building, uh, I don't know, a, uh, a, a web page that showed all of my friends' dogs and, and my own. Um, Does this exist? I feel like you've made this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> um, um, it, funny, funny you mentioned that. Actually, one of my friends runs a startup that uh, is all about creating apps for dog owners. That's amazing. It is. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, niche, uh, but great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't have a, a dog for a while, and then when I finally got one, I, I just yeah. immediately went up to him and said, hey, I need to use your app. Yeah. Uh, so let's say that we wanted to build a RESTful API so that we can create a single page application. Yeah. All right. Uh, in our in our uh, browser front end, that uh, will then get uh, all the the dogs that are in our collection, all the stuff that's that's there. Yeah. Um, now there is a, a a certain pattern that is very uh, very very common and almost standardized now, I would say, um, of how to actually build these APIs so that uh, your JavaScript on the front end knows what to do and can get. Uh, the different uh, properties of the objects that are in your database or in your collection or, or, or whatnot. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of this hand motion because I, I'm imagining <laughs> uh, sort of our, our, our browser right here. It's going to go get something from uh, the server. So some, from something far away. Server's here. Server's here. Okay. Kay. There we go. Server's there. There we go. Yep. It's going to get something. And then it's going to bring it to your browser. <laughs> um, that was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> we like to have fun on the NBA set, don't we? Yeah. You have to. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> All right. So uh, if we go back to the slide, uh, you'll notice that um, there's different types of HTTP methods. And uh, to create a RESTful API, the typical ones that we use are get, put, post, and delete. Right. right, and uh, there's really two type of resources. There's a single resource, or there's a collection of resources. Right, right, a list of, of these things. Right. Sure. So let's say that we wanted to get all of the dogs. Yeah, give me okay. all the dogs. All the dogs. Perhaps we want to create a collection URI. And uh, here's an example. Let's say that we had uh, uh, api.example.com. All right, perhaps a version of the API, like maybe v1, yeah. slash dog. So that's our collection. Never seen the v1 in an API uh, <laughs> before in my life. Never. Perhaps. I'm yeah. being sarcastic there. Yeah. <laughs> it's always like v1, v2. It's v2, always v1, v2. Yeah. 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 Lots of APIs get updated and they change things. So yeah. uh, in our case, we're just putting v1 right there. Uh, in the actual code, we don't have that. So if you wanted to add it, you can. Uh, but let's say that we wanted to um, uh, create that uh, collection URI being slash dogs. Okay, dogs with an S. Um, and uh, perhaps we wanted to get all the dogs. So we would implement the get at this URL to just list all the dogs in JSON format. Uh, let's say we want to replace all the dogs with a new collection of dogs. Uh, we can use the put right. uh, HTTP method. Yeah. If we wanted to create a new dog, I don't know how you could actually do that, but let's say that in let's our we application could. we could. Sounds uh, fun. We can post to that same URL slash dogs to create a new dog in the collection. Yeah. And if you wanted to delete a dog, uh, we, we, we didn't say any other word. We just, no. just remove it from the collection. The dog no. is still alive. Maybe just archive it. <laughs> archive it, maybe. I don't Aww. know. We could uh, archive the dog. Um, okay, maybe the dog moved away or something uh, by using the delete uh, uh, HTTP method. <laughs> the littlest hobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, um, uh, let's talk about how we can get a specific dog as well. Right. right. Perhaps that dog has an has a, an ID, a name, or something. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can actually use uh, the URL slash dog slash something right. to identify that dog. Uh, so if we use if we pair that up with the get request, then we can get a specific dog. 
Uh, if we use the put request, well, that's really meant to replace the dog, that specific dog, in, yeah. with other dog information in the in the collection. Uh, the post is not really used in uh, in uh, fairly RESTful APIs uh, for a, a specific um, uh, for a specific element. Uh, and if we want to remove that specific dog from the collection, we can just use the delect, uh, delete method. So you'll notice this pattern is actually used by lots of different APIs out there. Yeah. Um, this pretty much sort of has become the de facto way to build a RESTful API. Uh, and uh, if you're familiar with it here, perhaps you've seen it before, uh, you'll notice that it's, it's pretty much the same everywhere. When you start to think about, and, and once again, this maybe isn't specifically node-related, so forgive me for one second, but when you start to think about building an API, is there anything um, like quickly that you think that people should just consider uh, or tools that they should use when they're trying to think about what their API is going to be? Absolutely. Uh, so there's one tool that comes to mind uh, almost immediately, and I actually use it every time that I am working with an API. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of them. Um, the one that I use is called Postman, uh, and there's other ones. There's REST Workbench. There's a bunch of these tools. But essentially what they do is they give you a client that you can simulate uh, REST calls with mm -hmm. to a API server. Right. So you can see what type of uh, response that you're getting for a specific uh, uh, URL with a get or put or post. You can even test your own API server if you're developing it there. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of different stuff with these tools on the client side so that you don't have to write a full web application to test your API. Right. And there are other tools as well, like things that you can embed with Node. <coughs> uh, so right. Node testing tools like Mocha or, and stuff like that as well. Uh, so why don't we actually get down into the code uh, and actually build a RESTful API for dogs. Ooh. I'm excited. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to my screen, and uh, we're going to open up this uh, advanced REST API right here. And uh, you'll notice that even this project was actually created with the Express Generator before I then remove things that I didn't need. Um, so you'll notice package.json has the, all the dependencies that we might need, uh, including things that I don't actually end up using. Uh, now, if you remember, we used npm start. And the reason why npm start uh, is a command that works is because we've specified in our package.json that there's a script that says start. And all it does is it calls node right. app.js. Um, so for my so for my bad previously I had could have gone into the package JSON changed yep. that and I would have been I would have been solid. Yep. In theory. In theory. Yep. Yep. <laughs> there are more details, but we won't cover them <laughs> right now. Uh, um, so yeah, so it, it, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can change this to be anything. You can even use like uh, the different types of things. Like there are tools called. Um, node monitors, for example, is one of them. Uh, tools that basically ensure that node never goes down. If, if there's an error or something, it just restarts it. Right. Uh, but I like to use, uh, just, we're just going to use a straightforward node app.js, but we can call that with npm start, the name of that script. Um, and uh, if we were to start this, uh, basically we'll have our API up and running. But before we do that, let's actually go into the app.js and see what's there. Uh, so you'll notice a couple of interesting things. Right at the top, we're saying this is a node file, so you can actually sort of execute this app.js file. If you're in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Linux or, or OS X, you can make this uh, app.js executable. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you just say, hey, app.js execute, it will actually know that this is a node app, and it will run it that way. Uh, we're going to get our module dependencies. So we have HTTP, uh, Express. We have a bunch of other ones. Uh, and then we're going to do something similar like we did in the previous example. We're going to require a route, all right? And uh, I'll show you what these routes contain. There's two of them that we're uh, requiring. One is the routes, and one is the API router. Um, we're going to do go ahead and uh, create an Express uh, uh, app. Uh, after that, we're going to tell uh, Express to use a bunch of different middleware, including the body parser JSON, which is going to come in really handy because we're going to use JSON everywhere. Um, JSON this, for everyone. J JSON for everywhere, everything. <laughs> JSON, JSON, all the things. JavaScript, all the things. Uh, <laughs> this is going to come in really handy because we're going to also want to send JSON back to the server. So we're going to want Express to know how to parse that, uh, parse that, that request with right. the JSON. So it'll actually convert it into an object in JavaScript and right. not just uh, a file of uh, uh, not just text. Um, and uh, then we're going to tell the app to use our routes that we've also required right up here at the top. Uh, and then we're going to do a bunch of different things, like, hey, if there's an error, then do this. Uh, if the environment is in development, then for the error, render the error message. If it's in production, don't render the error message. Don't share the details of how our servers work, because we don't want those stack traces leaked to the user, because then they could figure out how our servers work. 
Uh, and now of course we're going to set the port, and in this case we're going to try to normalize the process.environment port. If not, we're going to use the port 3000. Finally, create that server, tell it to listen, and if there's an error, do this. If it's listening, do this. And the rest at the bottom are just functions that we've called previously, if you want to take a look at them. Um, and they basically say, hey, you know, they, they give us slightly more useful error codes uh, if there's an error. Uh, and of course, on listen, it'll say listening to this uh, address at this port. So all of this is in the repository. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just run the app just to show you what it looks like. Now, if you're running this for the first time, you're going to want to go into the 12 folder. And you're going to want to do an npm install to make sure that you have all the packages that you need. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to do that as well. I love the little boop, working, working, working icon. There it is, and it's done. Uh, now, if you remember, if I do npm start, it should execute node app.js, and it did. Yes. There we go. And it says listening on port 3000. Now, if I go to my browser right here, and I say, hey, node 3000, hello world. It works. Yes. Awesome. Um, now, of course, there's no default engine that was specified. So when we rendered <laughs> something, uh, we basically told Node that, hey, don't use Jade, don't use any templating library, because all we're going to use is JSON, right. and that's OK. So I'm going to reboot this just to remove the error so that we have a clear screen right here. There we go. Great. And uh, now, what I will show you, uh, so we hit that index just in case you were curious what that actually looks like. Uh, all it does is just send hello world, which is why it complains, because it doesn't know what, there's no templating, so it doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, but all we said is send hello world. What we want to take a look at is the, actually the API. All right, so here we are. We've got Express. We've got our standard router right there. Now, um, I have an array of dogs here. Uh, now, typically, you don't want to put your data in the file <laughs> that you're developing. Yeah. But for the sake of our example here, that's what we're going to do, because we don't want to connect to a database just yet. In fact, the next module Ooh. is where we're going to do that. Look, setting it uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for now, we're just going to use the dogs array. It's going to contain uh, a bunch of objects, OK? And each object has a dog ID, which is the number of the dog. Uh, maybe it's name, Ginger. Uh, maybe uh, you know, Ruby is my dog. And there's also Buddy and a bunch of other dogs in this list. And uh, why don't we implement the first thing that we want to do, which is perhaps get all the dogs. Right. Okay. Give me all that data. Give me all of that data. Give it all. <laughs> so to do that, we're going to add router.get, OK? I'm going to say slash dogs. Yep. OK? Uh, and then we're, it's going to be real simple. We're just going to respond with JSON these dogs. Right. All right? And this is the dog array right up here. Now, um, if you were doing this with a database, you probably want to go get something from the database before you respond, uh, or even filter, or do a query of some sort, or even just read, if you're reading a file or whatever, maybe a, a picture or a video stream or something. Right. Uh, you want to do all of that and then respond uh, to that API request. But in our case, our dogs are already in the file. It's a variable that's, that's, that's available right out of that. And so when I do a respond.json, I'm just going to give it dogs, and it's going to convert that array into uh, JSON. So now if I go back to my browser, and I type in dogs, well, correction, I type in API slash dogs, it will return there you go. that API. And in fact, we can even double check that it is returning the type application slash JSON, Perfect. which is what jQuery and all the other libraries expect. What everyone loves. All right, great. So that was fairly straightforward. Uh, the next thing that we perhaps might want to do is get a specific dog. Right? So here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, we've got the same type of get right here, okay? but we're going to introduce this new uh, concept of the uh, colon okay, ID. And what this is going to mean is that it's going to take what comes after dogs in the URL yeah. and set it as a parameter called ID. Right, so anything after that, that whole entire thing, as long as it only sees it within that parameter. Area. Exactly. Okay. Now, if you wanted to add more, you could also add more right. by uh, typing it in and then saying, hey, perhaps the dog has a specific collar or something, and that collar also has an ID of some sort. Right. Uh, perhaps you don't want to call it that ID, you want to call it maybe caller ID. Uh, then it's going to put these two parameters, uh, um, and it's going to take them out of the URL right. as well. Now, we're not going to do that for this example. 
We're going to keep it simple. Which is um, awesome because back in the day, we used to have to go and parse all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, figure like, oh, here's a query string. How many things do I have on it? How, like, I mean, we still have to do that, but you know, the routing there is really awesome. Makes it a lot simpler. You yeah. are correct. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, can you say that again? You are correct. Yes, I, uh, yes again, one more time. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, all right, cool. Small wins, small wins. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so let's uh, take a look at this. And uh, because I have an array, all I want to do is I actually want to iterate through uh, my array of dogs to see if there are any dog that matches that ID. Now, if you're doing this in a database, you can actually use a, a, a select or, or whatnot. You can mm -hmm. do actual proper querying. Mm -hmm. In our case, we're just going to iterate through the array. Very simply, you're going to use the for loop. Uh, we're going to create this variable i equals 0. And we're going to create a variable dog that's going to contain the dog that we found. Uh, first, we're going to set it to null in case we don't find anything. Right. Uh, we're going to loop through the dog, uh, the, the dog's array. So we're just going to do a standard uh, you know, increment by 1 every single time. If and then we're going to do an if statement that says if this dog's at this index of i, starting at 0, obviously, uh, see if there's a dog ID. And if this matches the request parameters the ID right. uh, field. So the, what that's going to do is going to take the um, ID from our URL. So uh, Express will parse this URL. It will put it in params. Uh -huh. All right, And yeah. then uh, it's going to make it available as the ID variable, because that's the name that we gave it. So that when we compare the dog ID to this ID, if it matches, then that's the dog that we're looking for. Yeah, success. Success. And we're going to set that dog uh, at i to this dog variable, and we're going to break out of the loop. Now, of course, this is a very simple example. Um, we're assuming that our array has you know, unique IDs everywhere. You know, like the, assuming we're perfect. We're here. assuming we're perfect. We're this is just a very perfect. simple example. Yeah, right? don't don't do what don't we did. Don't do this in production, <laughs> right? Use a real database and the real query engine. Do uh, all your error checking, everything you need do to do. Do our validation, yeah. check to make sure that the ID is actually a number and not just like some random string of characters. Right, or or yeah, or yeah. whatever you need to do. Just for the sake of our example, yeah. uh, we're gonna we're gonna assume that this is all perfect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if the dog um, that if we found it. All right, it would not be equal to null, but if it's uh, so, if it's not equal to null after this loop is complete, either by the break or just by reaching the end of the loop, uh, we're going to respond with JSON of that specific dog. Okay, if it's equal to null, we're going to respond with JSON some status that we didn't find the dog. Right. All right. Yeah. So if I go back into my uh, browser and I go, hey, I want my dog, which is Ruby. There we go. It yeah. returns a specific uh, a JSON object. If we take a look at before, it actually returned a array. Right. So you can see right there. All right. And if I try maybe perhaps doing something like 11, 30, oh. status not found, ah, didn't find the dog. It's shouting at you. Yeah. <laughs> all caps. <laughs> Did it wrong, OK? It's all caps. <laughs> if I say we try 0 again, we get actually ginger. Uh, and it's nice. It, it responds with application.json. Uh, all is well. Nice. So you can see right at the beginning, we're starting to slowly build up this API. Yep. We've already got the get for the collections. We've already got the get to a specific dog. Now let's see how we can actually post things. Oh, yeah, OK. We're getting real here. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, this is going to require a little bit uh, of a different tool, all right? Because unless we create the front end uh, and use jQuery to post something, yeah. we won't be able to post it right away. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the first thing that I want to do is perhaps uh, post a new dog, right? Add a new dog to the collection. So let's see how the code is actually uh, built. Uh, we're going to say router.post instead of dot get. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we're going to say we're going to use this URL. Obviously, we're going to post to the collection. So we're going to add a new dog to the collection. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the dogs array and we're going to add this new uh, dog. And we're going to assume, because we didn't do any validation here, we're going to assume that we're perfect. We're actually sending a JSON object that contains dog ID and dog name yeah. in the body of the request. Yeah. It's a lot of assumptions. Yeah, yeah. Don't do Careful this that. in production. <laughs> Please validate your APIs. Please like yeah. validate that the people send proper stuff, all right? Because you, you people on the web are, are a little, uh, uh, sometimes, they like to test your API. 
I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like to test your API. Yeah. And your so, databases. And your databases. So mm -hmm. be very careful on how you actually it. do this. <laughs> uh, make sure that you are um, checking that uh, that request contains a JSON object yeah. uh, with the body. And um, once we assume that we have this, we can push it straight to the array uh, and return with a status 200 OK. Everything yeah. is all good. We were able to add a dog to our API uh, to our collection. Now, uh, I'm actually going to switch uh, browsers, and I'm going to switch to Chrome, because I'm going to actually show you how to do this with Postman. It's one of my favorite tools. All right, and uh, because, of course, I did not actually install Postman before I started, I'm going to do this real quick. Go straight to the store, add it to Chrome. Takes a second. Boom, done. It's added. Go right there. Wait for it to add. Go into apps. Postman should be there. Oh, in fact, there's another client called Advanced REST Client. We'll use that instead. It's already there. All right, so let's say that we had uh, a local API. Okay, We can say, hey, we want to go to dogs, right? We want to post. We want to give it a JSON format. And we're going to say, hey, pass in dog ID. We're going to give it a new ID that doesn't exist in our system already, like five, perhaps, uh, dog name. What do you want to call the dog? Brutus. Brutus. OK. I feel like I need to add a little oomph to your dog oomph. names. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so if I send this, OK, and I just need to double check that we are, in fact, running on, th on 3000. Yes, we are. And go back here. We've got our API slash dogs. Do that. If I send this, uh, unable to set request her. OK, actually, we did something wrong. We put it in the headers when, in fact, we wanted to put it in, in the, the body. Payload. There you yeah. go. So now if I send it, voila, 200, OK. Nice. Status is all good. Uh, now if I actually go back and do a get for the same URL, OK, and I send this, it should return all of, all of the dogs. So I press it. Let's do it. Oh, there is Brutus. Yes. Right there. Yeah. OK. So you notice that uh, we made a, a teensy mistake yeah, right here. Yeah, we put it as a string. Yeah, we put it all as one glorious string, which was yeah. the, the wrong thing to do. Uh, but uh, that's OK. Um, the point is, it was actually inserted to our array. Well, it just goes back to our whole point of, don't do this. Check everything. Check everything. <laughs> it's all good. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so if I do this again with Postman, which for some reason went all big on me, I can do, uh, let's say I wanted to do a put. Uh, I wanted to create a whole new dog collection. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say I wanted to do a put. And just to show you what that actually looks like in the code first, uh, put is right here. What we're going to do is we're going to say put instead of post. Yeah. We're going to get all the dogs. All right. Uh, we're going to print out that body just for funsies. Uh, and then, <laughs> yes, I did just say funsies. <laughs> just for more fun. Just for more fun. <laughs> uh, and instead of like adding the body using the push to the like uh, adding it to the array using the push uh, function, we're actually going to just set the whole dogs entirely. All right, so we're going to assume that you know we actually did this correctly. So I'm going to do that by actually copying what I originally had. Okay, going into uh, Postman. Okay, giving it a place to go. Okay, replacing this with a put, telling the body, hey, it's actually uh, raw JSON. All right. And I'm going to change this so that it doesn't have buddy. So it's just going to be two dogs. Now, if I send this over, status OK. Yep. If I go ahead and do a get on that same URL, it should only put two dogs. Moment of truth. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> Everything works. I love clapping so much. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yay. Um, now, Last thing that I want to show you, because we are slowly reaching the end of this module, is how to actually remove a dog from the collection. Oh. If you want to remove all the dogs, okay, you can just call delete on the entire URL. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to remove a specific dog. Okay, so delete would just reset the, uh, the array to empty. Mm -hmm. To delete a specific dog, we do ver something very similar to what we did with the getting the actual specific dog. But in our case, when we find it, from the ID. Right. We want to splice that array by one yeah. so that we remove that specific element from the array and keep the other dogs in there and return 200 OK. If it didn't find something, if it never returned, never got into this if statement, it's going to return status 404 not found. So if I go ahead and I say, hey, 
uh, remove this dog from our collection, maybe dog 20. It actually should not find it, so it will say not found. That is correct. That's good. If I remove, uh, oh, no. let's say, dog zero, oh. 200 OK, we found it. If I don't go ahead and then get all the dogs, or if I try to get dog zero, it should say not found. Yep. But if I get all the dogs, it will return the last dog, Ruby, my dog. If I want to remove the entire collection, oh. all right, if I remove it, <laughs> 200 OK, it removed everything correctly. If I go back and try to get all the dogs, it will return an empty array. Oh, that's so sad. But success, that's our API success. Yeah. works. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's a process of going about and building an API for something you might be working on. Maybe you're getting songs from a database or, you know, whatever it may be. Maybe you've got to get the most latest uh, uh, things that people had tweeted and you'd save them in a database or something. I don't know. But maybe, you know, that's the idea of going, retrieving, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I feel like that always comes up in, in a lot of projects. And to make this all right, right before we end this module in 10 seconds, we are actually going to... Um, Put all the dogs back. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that makes me feel better. 200, OK. So now if you do I was that, actually really anxious there for a moment. There we go. So back. weird. It's just like, I knew it was going to work, but I was anxious because I was like, you're deleting a dog. That doesn't seem right. It seems so wrong. It <laughs> seems just, so wrong. Oh we put gosh. them all back. It's all good now. <laughs> yeah. We're all happy again. So we uh, have, we had what, three successful demos, one failed. Not bad. That's 75%. Um, not a bad track. Yeah, not bad. High five. Yeah. High awesome. Five. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> So there's a couple of resources that we have up on the screen here that can kind of take what we showed you um, and get you started a little bit uh, further down those lines. So we talked about the Express Framework. You just want to want to go check it out, uh, read a little bit about it. Um, you know, again, it's like version four plus now, right? And we've shown things from three or four that yeah, kind of so thing. So three was that first example that we saw with a very very basic uh, Express. Um, uh, and then the, the last new examples that we saw, all of them were Express That's 4. And there's a really good tutorial that's listed, Intro to Express. Uh, Jade Templates, I feel like I constantly need to go and look up some of this stuff and understanding the templating. Now, we didn't really go through too much of the templating. We will when we start to talk about the front end a little bit more, and we'll kind of explain some of the basics of it. Um, and then uh, JavaScript and, and Jade Templating, uh, really good uh, you know, up on SlideShare. There's a, uh, some good opportunities for you to catch up on that as well. All right, yeah. so stay tuned for the next module, and we'll be back. Yay!